So you, you're the former director general of the tax administration in Jamaica and uh, there's been um, a tax reform uh, going on there. Can you tell us what are the defining features of this reform? My core, my core function relates to the administrative side, but for the reforms in Jamaica, they have been on the tax policy side as well as the tax administration side. Um, on the tax administration side, we try to reform the organizational structure um, to be more effective in our service delivery. And so we had been back in 2000, 1999 to 2000, we were aligned by tax types and that became less than optimal because each department, each tax department had its own services um, doing the same thing, compliance, registration and so on. And so we moved to integrating those departments into a function based structure. So we created the tax administration and audit department. So we had three departments in one, which consolidated all the functions. So now we had single registration um, point, compliance was consolidated for all tax types, which, you know, was a lot more effective in our service delivery to the taxpayers. On the policy side, we introduced the, the general consumption tax, which is a VAT, which reformed the indirect tax structure, and, and that created um, more equity across. It broadened the tax base because prior to that services were hardly taxed except through the direct tax method. And so now that services were brought into the VAT base, the general consumption tax, tax base was much broader. Um, the tax revenues grew significantly and although our original objective was a revenue neutral um, change because the VAT is tied to prices, um, the tax take increased um, tremendously and continued to, um, to do so. You already mentioned uh, the achievements, some of the achievements of this reform. Do you have other achievements to share with us? The, the achievements of the reform will increase compliance for sure, increase revenues which are critical and always a focus of developing countries and governments because the, 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 the resources are always limited and the, the overriding objective is really to increase revenues and facilitate voluntary compliance. And the notion of voluntary compliance is very important because with limited resources it's very difficult to enforce, have a large enforcement program because that requires a lot of resources. So the key is to provide effective service delivery, effective education program, effective um, taxpayer services, information, so that people can voluntarily make their declarations and comply. So I would say that the key um, benefits that, that accrued had to do with increased revenues. Um, there was a, a tremendous improvement in the public perception of the organization as well um, and increased voluntary compliance. What role have international donors been playing in the tax reform process in Jamaica? We could not have done it without the donors. Um, there, um, contributions came in the form of grants and loans. Um, the major reforms we have had have all been supported by, by donors, donor funding. And in addition to hardware, you know, computer equipment, um, furniture and, and, and other resources, um, we also got technical assistance, significant technical assistance um, to build capacity because another part of this whole reform is to ensure that there is sustainability. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to reform if when the donors have left um, there is no sustainability. So a key part of this partnership with donors has to do with ensuring that there are counterparts counterparts assigned to, 
to the donor, 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 donor counterparts. So that the exchange of, of information, the exchange of knowledge takes place and that there is knowledge retention for continuity and sustainability in the programs thereafter. The, the key message here is is to build the capacity, the local capacity. Oftentimes we run the risk of um, expert delivery from donors that end up delivering a product but not leaving the knowledge behind. And I think that is a crucial element in the, 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 the sustainability of any programs that are implemented. So there should be a a, a deliberate attempt on the part of the donors to ensure that local country counterparts are assigned and assigned full-time so that they're focused on the project, on the program, on the reform in order that we can have this continuity. Jamaica is a small developing country uh, and you've been so far very successful with your tax reform. Would you have any message or lessons to share with uh, other similar countries? I think the key lessons here in, in, in implementing any, any small or large scale reforms is that there has to be an effective plan in place. First of all, you have to have a very comprehensive reform plan focused on the priorities you've defined. Um, if it's over many years, then you have to have an incremental approach. You have to have um, accountabilities. People have to be responsible and accountable. And timelines have to be established. And of course, you need to have measures by which you determine the progress that is being made. In addition to, to, to a plan, um, a communication strategy is another important thing. Few reforms ever become successful without effectively engaging stakeholders. And stakeholders, of course, are internal and external. And both groups play a critical part in, in the success of those reforms. Um, one particular group that, if they exist in a country, <coughs> sorry, could create some difficulties are the, the trade unions. And if the reforms are going to have an impact on staff um, welfare and staff well-being, and particularly if there, there are layoffs to be done and so on, it is absolutely crucial that the trade unions be engaged at a very early stage, that the objectives be clearly outlined. Civil society is also very important. Um, professional groups where they are the end users of the service that we're going to be delivering. So oftentimes, Tax administrations tend to develop reforms inside out. What that means is they decide what the reforms will look like and then they create them and say this is what they should want. But I think a collaboration in trying to engage the stakeholders prior to finalizing those reform plans and saying what is it do you want us to give? What is it that would make you comply? more more easily you know and so we build that program as a collaborative effort fulfilling what their needs are and then fulfilling of course what what will make our our jobs a lot easier in in delivering that service